thousand subscribers. Y'all are awesome. Roll it. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tech5. Today we're gonna to be looking at some cyberpunk information. Now, if you're getting this game and you're kind of curious as to what kind of level of performance you can expect with this game, well, today I have some charts, I have some graphs, I have some information that's going to allow us to kind of make a guesstimation of the kind of performance we can expect on our own PCs. Now, I'm not gonna have your own individual build, but with the information I give you today, we might be able to go ahead and make a guesstimation of the range of performance you can expect on your own PC at home. So if you're interested in that, stick around. If you guys are excited about Cyberpunk, but you're worried about the performance you can expect, today I'm going to try to help give you an idea of what kind of performance your PC will be getting. Today's charts and graphs are brought to you by Tom's Hardware, and I will be using the information they provide on their website for reference, which will also be linked in the description. I do wanna give you a preface though, because at the time of filming, it appears that they have actually taken down those graphs, but I still have them. Before that, I do wanna point out that cyberpunk devs are very aware of the extremely demanding game that they've created and are even making it a point to be kind of tight-lipped about the targets that they were shooting for when developing the game. A system requirement chart was released showing some of the system specs that would be needed in order to run the game at the respective settings. However, they do not indicate an FPS target, so it is not entirely clear as to what kind of performance we can expect per piece of hardware. This brings me back to Tom's hardware. Tom's Hardware's test PC consisted of an i99K, 32GB of RAM, and a variety of GPUs that will be shown in the graphs to come. As it currently stands, the game is affected by CPU scaling, but just how much is yet to be determined. These graphs do not represent the final version of the game due to de novo, so keep in mind that there may be some small variant depending on the swing of CPU scaling. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to see all the parts used in the test. We have a lot of graphs, so let's get right to it. If you have any of the more top tier cards, this portion may be relevant to you, as I will be working my way from medium settings to ultra settings at their respective resolutions, such as 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. Starting off at medium settings at 1080p. If you're using a GPU in the 1060 to 2060 range, you can find your expected FPS on medium settings here, but do keep in mind this is a top tier CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM, so you can expect a bit lower performance so it may not be too bearable of a game to play with lower hardware under 30 FPS. But nothing is concrete just yet, remember these are just to give you an idea. Feel free to pause the video if you happen to see a graph you wish to study. Next up is medium at 1440p. We see the 1060 GPUs around 20 FPS range, and I'll be honest, that does not sound like a great time to me. I'm not trying to dog anyone with a lower end GPU at all, I just want to provide information as I have it. And medium at 4K. Here I'm actually quite surprised to see the 3060 Ti doing so well at 4K here. Despite it being at medium settings, an average 38 FPS at 4K isn't doing bad for an RPG. Moving on to ultra settings here, I will be showing graphs of GPUs without ray tracing on and then ray tracing and DLSS on because why would you not use DLSS if you could? 1080p ultra settings, ray tracing off. Even though it's just 1080p, it is good to see such a high end game pushing 100 FPS, ray tracing or not. 1080p ultra, ray tracing on. As everyone should have expected, we do see a big boost in FPS with DLSS running. And even with ray tracing, the 80 FPS on 3080 is quite nice. But for those of us playing on a bit higher resolution, what can we expect? 1440p Ultra ray tracing off. We see what appears to be a 20 FPS loss across the board when we jump up to 1440, but still have the 6800 XT and the 3080 above the 60 FPS marker which is good. 1440 Ultra, ray tracing on. 
When we turn on ray tracing, we see a bit of a loss in FPS, especially in the 3080. Though we are still above that 60 FPS mark, with the help of DLSS, the 3090 stays surprisingly around the same mark, whether you have on ray tracing or not. If you're one of those lucky enough to get one of these BF GPUs, get on your pony boy. 4K Ultra Ray Tracing Off Without the help of DLSS, 4K gaming isn't looking to be a smooth, buttery experience for us PC players, as it doesn't appear that even with top tier hardware, 60 FPS is attainable. 4K Ultra Ray Tracing On So, I guess it's a good thing that DLSS does exist, because with it, 4K ray tracing looks like it'll be a fanboy's dream come true. Assuming you've got a 3080 plus and top tier CPU, which you probably do if you're using a 4K monitor to begin with. The 3060 Ti seems to be a decent contender for 30 FPS gameplay at 4K with DLSS on and ray tracing on. As much crap as I'd like to give Nvidia, they truly have done something great with the DLSS technique. Guys, if you are planning on getting this game at launch, let me know what kind of hardware you're working with. I'm interested. I do have plans to actually live stream this game at launch on YouTube if you guys are on the fence about possibly getting this game or not, and you don't mind the spoilers. Feel free, come hang out. I gotta give a quick shout out to my Patreons. You guys are amazing. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it tremendously. Now to my subscribers, I thank you as well. Thank you for helping me get to 1K and continuing to grow. I appreciate it. I'm truly blessed. Thank you. That's gonna do it for the video. As always, if you do have any questions, concerns, confusions, whatever it may be, don't hesitate to ask. I do wanna to continue to build and grow the channel. And I thank you guys so much for the 1K. Consider sharing the video and consider subscribing. If you've not, I'd love to have you join the vibe. And with that said, I hope you can like, I hope you can subscribe. And if not, well, I hope to catch you in another one. And remember, it's a vibe, a tech vibe, specifically. We'll see you.